77. I don't know why it said 32 times, I clearly didn't press it 32 times, but I think because of the rail driver it probably gets confused. Anyway, good afternoon driver, we have switched the 76 for a 77. The run to Sheffield is cut short at Penniston, where workers are finishing the track repairs after a crashed steam engine. The only stop before Penniston will be Guide Bridge Platform 3. Have a safe trip and good luck. Get the lights on. That one and that one. Oh, that rail driver's doing its thing. Wait for that to catch up. I know I need to play more career scenarios, don't I, Xeriox? But I like playing workshop scenarios. <laughs> Which is the power. power now. Yeah, this one failed previously, so I thought I'd rerun it. Having re-downloaded the fixed version. No, the scenario failed, Stephen. This this fail wasn't me. That's all right, Doc. They'll probably say I was driving the GAI, the, the other AI train. <laughs> Cheers, Panda. Let's just check our AI our path here. Good. Five oh three Victor, don't worry, I haven't forgotten. <laughs> coming up on thirty speed limit and a fifty coming to us.
Dave, I'd, I've certainly mentioned that um, that request. So Dave's talking about having the option to not have a thumb vote up or vote down. I've certainly mentioned that, and uh, that they're aware of it. I don't know whether anything can be done, but uh, it's certainly been heard. Ian Zoo, no, there'll be no, uh, uh, there's no giveaway tonight. Um, if you have a look on the Steam group for TSL, um, I put a post in there explaining what, I'm, what changes I'm making, or have made. So far, it's working really well. I think people are enjoying the new, the new way of doing it. Oh, hello. Let's cut the power. Cut the brakes. better. Now the rail driver's working again.
double yellow. If that's double yellow, that's a single yellow. The red wouldn't be for another mile, we've got loads of time. We're stopping at Guidebridge. anyway. Rob Allen, this scenario is called Electric Blue Power. It's by Darkness Monster, who's on the chat, and uh, it features the Class 77 BR Blue here on the Woodhead route. It's really uh, chugging the frame rate. I seem to recall there's something to look at over here. Oops, time to go. Oops. Oh, 
it's a regional passenger, isn't it, Darkness? Or is this an express passenger? I've said it for a regional passenger, but... Set the current. I'll set the all express passenger lights then. Um, to answer your question about Unreal 4, <laughs> uh, cheers Taff, um, if you, I mean 3D models are 3D models, um, what a train is like, I don't know, I can't say anything about that, but I will say that if you have a 3D model like a house and you, when it works in train sim, then you can import that into Unreal now, it'll need some changes, but fundamentally it's not that different. whether the trains end up differently because obviously trains have got other things beside the 3D modelling you need to worry about but um, for static scenery I think of, uh, it's, it's just actually it's dead easy The other question is, if you take a 3D model that's been built for something current gen and you try and run it in a next gen engine like Unreal, what does it really look like? Does it look like a current gen model um, in a next gen environment? The things that you can do, one of the key things with moving to Unreal is materials. Um, so uh, when you make your model at the moment, you apply textures and use the standard materials that are provided, uh, the shader selectors when you want to make the model. Um, in Unreal, you need to create materials and, and use p uh, physical base materials, PBM. Uh, and if you get that right, then it's um, it's really really good. But you do need to do the material setup. Gouger, you, your texture is fine, but materials is another thing on top of that. So, what you need to do is to. Um, so, when you do your basic import of your FBX file, um, it will create basic materials for all of your textures. And what you then need to do is to update those materials and add in all the extra stuff. Um, so that it says what well, it's metallic or it's um, smoothness or anything like that is at appropriate points which you can do by adding potentially additional texture maps, UV maps and so on, well, not UV maps but other texture maps. You can achieve most of the, most things using exactly what you've got and just adding additional detail to the um, to the materials that are created or creating different materials and uh, mapping those in. saying that Unreal uses vector models instead of actual texture models. No, it uses the same, basically the same principle, but you've got the key is the key difference is materials. Um, no. 
no cock blocker materials or about the um, physical characteristics of it so the metallic things look metallic and plastic things look metallic, uh, plastic and shiny things are shiny and uh, and so forth so it's not um, it's not about whether they scale it's the, basically it's still a textured model that looks exactly the same way as it would in any other game you then have this extra concept of materials which make a massive difference on top but what it means is that you can add additional layering of information via material so that if you for example you've got a signal box then your stone bits or your brick bits you can add a normal map to them you can make the brick bits not shiny you can make them rough and then the wooden bits you can perhaps make them a little bit shiny and you can make them a little bit rough um, and you can put a different kind of normal map on them so that when you actually walk up look up really close to your model it looks it just looks stunning it really does it catches the light in amazing ways Dinting, which is coming through now. One of the main problems, Coblopper, with making Train Simulator 2015 uh, open source is that it depends on commercial libraries and bespoke libraries which can't be given out, so you'd never be able to compile it. Um, even if the source was open, you'd just never be able to compile it. So there's just no point putting the source for TS 2015 out at all. shooting ourselves in the foot with new gen stuff then. <laughs> oh, are they keeping? I've got no idea. Oh, could we still create everything like we do on the current engine? Well, if you're talking about using the current engine, nothing will change current game stays exactly the way it is. Um, in terms of the new one, way too early to tell.
I'm going to pause break this one. Sorry, folks. It's just my first pause break. <laughs> That'll do. Yes, very nice timing on the steam engine, wasn't it? So Coplop, but you didn't say how we're how are we shooting ourselves in the foot with the next gen? is the wood headline. That's a lot of locos. Oh, I see what you mean, Coplopa. I think they would buy the new one, to be perfectly honest. There's no difference, uh, the, the, there's just no way of summing up the difference between current gen and new gen. It really isn't. in five miles. Stephen Jam, will the next train sim have a milk float as a quick drive license? Well, if I get my way, absolutely.
Rob Allen travelled this line many times in the late 50s, not often you see the dams fall. <laughs> No gouger, for some reason the track on this tunnel hasn't been set up with tunnel markers, so uh, the game um, isn't telling me that the tunnel's off. Dunford Bridge coming up one and a half miles. I don't know why these don't have tunnel markers on them, um, S-Graves. It was explained to me that basically they, they can lay tunnels without making them tunnels effectively. And I don't know A, why we do that. I'm sure there's a really good reason for it. Uh, or B, how. Something to do with the track definition of it. Slowing down for the 50 as we come out of the tunnel. But you know you can switch it back to the old room, the old gizmo, don't you? That is still there. You can switch it over using the um, uh, one of the options on the bottom. won't get removed in 2016. Don't, don't be silly. Thank you. 
Hey Kevin Razor, thank you for the follow, much appreciated. Cheers Adam, thanks for joining us this evening. Penistone, four miles, the end of the scenario. So, um, Copper Bow, are you saying that we do have Dutch content in the game? <laughs> uh, Banana, we are carrying a, an express passenger train. that would wind Copper Bar up. <laughs> Jeez, the slur. Yeah, yeah, man. Let's get back in the driving seat, please. Coming up to Peniston, 1.3 miles. Yeah, you certainly did have the 08s, um, some of the 08s. In fact, um, one of the things, Dad and I were uh, looking around some of his stuff, and we actually found a Dutch 08. Van Leeroo, thanks for joining us this evening. Good luck with your Windows 10, uh, Gouger. Finishing the last scenario. I'm about fried. Light could be a problem. I didn't see that coming. We're going to spad right. Ah, oh, no. 
Who put a red light there? <laughs> oh dear. Never mind. <laughs> There we go. Right, doors open. <laughs> oh dear. What a fantastic scenario though. about that beam being in the way really. It's ruining a perfectly good shot otherwise. Oh well. Good run driver, now it's time to take a rest until we head back to Manchester London Road in about 30 minutes. Fantastic. That was really good. Thoroughly enjoyed that. That was Electric Blue Power by Darkness Monster. And, um, yeah, I guess it changed a point for an AI train. So, <clears throat> never mind. Signalman shouldn't have changed that point. I was clearly on top of it already. Right, so that's me done for this evening. Thanks for watching, everybody. I will be back tomorrow. I've got no idea what I'm doing tomorrow yet. I've, I have got an idea, but I need to find out. Check it out. But uh, that'll be cool. Yeah, that one's for the next fail montage. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, and on that note, I will see you all tomorrow. Thanks very much for joining. And, uh, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>